Nokia. Well, Nokia is the world's largest manufacturer of mobile phones, but also portable music players and cameras, for that matter. Um, but I think Nokia has a much larger role to play in enabling all kinds of ways that people can connect more effectively. And that's actually what brings me to NRC, and that's why I'm excited to be a part of that. NRC Nokia Research Center is Nokia's research center, obviously, as the name states. NRC creates the future possibilities for Nokia. I believe that this, this small group of 800 people who are researchers, they're not business people, they have the mandate to renew Nokia. And to me, part of the excitement about being at NRC is the freedom and actually the mandate that I feel we have to really think broadly about where these next opportunities are going to lie. Uh, NRC is a worldwide organization. More than half of our people are in Finland. The other half is scattered throughout the world. Uh, we've recently established new labs in the United States in the proximity of some of the world's uh, most renowned universities. Last year we opened a joint lab with MIT. Um, and then on the other hand very close to Stanford and, and uh, the other leading Silicon Valley universities. In addition, we have joint lab with Tsinghua University in Beijing. We have a lab in Tokyo, and then there's one in Bochum as well, in Germany. NRC has one of the broadest mixes of people that I've encountered in any research organization I've worked in. All kinds of people, really all kinds of people from all over the world, from different areas. Uh, young people, more senior people, it's a very di diverse mix of people. I think the result of diversity is creativity. I'm hoping and I'm seeing some signs of that we need to have more people at NRC who understand the human impacts and the human dimensions of this. People like that who are, who are able to bring in new things uh, to help us find the next big thing. Pushing beyond the frontiers. If I remember correct, I wanted to be a, an astronaut. And on the technological side, I'm not that far away from that dream, but uh, physically, I'm a bit, <laughs> a bit more on the Earth. Uh, my motivation is that I feel that I can really make a change. Nokia's mission of connecting people was the one that resonated most clearly for me. You know, there should be always a, be a good match of challenge and talents. I'm hoping my, my work will change the world to be more playful and happy place. And I really admire the spirit of the people that we have there. And I think that is the single biggest difference to other research organizations. First challenge is to find something new. Other challenge of how to encourage people to f that failure is a good thing, because we should be failing more, actually. How, um, how we can contribute to the world actually being a cleaner place with uh, no global warming in 10 to 15 years. The biggest challenge is, I find, is that this is a new way of working. And this new open collaboration model means we have to open up, be more vulnerable, take risks, and maybe make more mistakes. A good example is MIT, where we have half of the people coming from the university, half from Nokia. We have a joint lab, physical lab, where people from Nokia and from MIT work in the same physical lab but they also work with the students around that area. Uh, so that we really have the funding sources in place so that professors and students will have the incentive to work with us, not just because they're interested, but because we can help support them financially as we work together on issues of common interest. I think that there are big innovations yet to come. 
innovation is yet change the world. We want to develop technology that really matters to human. Making, making, making technology, technology, technology. innovation. Innovation. Well, we can build bridges, if you will, between the physical and the virtual. Virtual combine the physical and the digital world. So, if you will, the physical layer is made up of atoms, and the digital layer is made up of bits, which is then that the physical and the world and then that virtual and the internet are combined in the internet. So, how do I see the future? You never know, really. That's, uh, that's the inspiring thing about the future. Nothing like what it is now, I guess. Nobody can predict the future. <laughs> Anyone can predict the future. I like Alan Kay's quote, uh, the best way to predict the future is invent it. Uh, the great thing about working at NRC is that you're not just guessing what the future will be like, but you're actually making it happen. The web and the mobile device are two key innovations of the last 20 years that have changed our lives rather dramatically. So if we think of, you know, currently people talk about Web 2.0, uh, as, as the major, in other words, sort of social networking in, in the web. And, and uh, we're going after the next, which is then that the physical and, uh, world and the virtual and the, and the internet are combined. Uh, we look at the fuzzy front end of research. We try to pick up the weak signals from here and there. So I think the, if, if you look at, for, you know, for example, a researcher, why would they work for Nokia uh, and, and Nokia Research Center, it's obviously that if you believe that mobility is the next wave in the, uh, um, in the information technology, then you know, this is the place to be. If you work at NRC, you actually might end up having your innovation as part of the mobile phone. Nokia manufactures one million phones per day, every year, every day, including Sundays, Christmases. Imagine if you invented something that became part of the mobile phone. You would be seeing your innovation in the hands of millions. Actually, 900 million people every day would be looking at the screen where potentially your innovation would be in. I think that's pretty powerful.